All right, what's up? Welcome back here for another recap video. Today, let's uh, recap uh, the trades yesterday. I know it is Saturday, but sometimes on Friday, I just need a break from the markets when I'm done. And uh, I don't get to, sometimes I don't review my film until Saturday or and Sunday. And I don't like to make recap videos until after I review the film, just so I get the better idea of how I performed. But yesterday was wasn't too bad it was my biggest green day of the week um i was up up uh, 764 on for yesterday a couple red days on the week uh small red though very very small red scratch trade kind of flat days and then some smaller green days on tuesday and thursday and wrapped up with still about a 1100 or 1200 dollar a week which is just okay it's pretty decent um, I'll definitely take it, especially for the slow week, considering I also had two red days. But the stocks that I traded yesterday was NVFY and BACK. So we can go through these stocks here. Uh, NVFY was the, the primary one. I made about uh, 680 on, and then back maybe I made 80 bucks on. Uh, NVFY had a nice opening surge, uh, which we can review. But I liked this one pre-market because we were above VWAP. We had increasing volume um, coming into the open. Increasing volume coming into the open. Uh, double topping at the high, pullback, and then getting that squeeze through high a day. For the opening surge, very strong move, very, very strong move which I liked, I was very caught off guard with how how well this held the highs. We got the one minute pullback and then the continuation move. And this also is very surprising. Uh, we did um, try to trade the range a little bit. I think it was up about 700 or so in this area is up about 700. And then I got caught over trading um, I got caught over trading in the consolidation area here, and I even got caught on this false breakout. I just, uh, actually in a couple attempts, like I took three attempts trying to catch this breakout, and every single time I just kept taking a loss. And then the last time I tried, it flashed down to about 390, taking about a 12 cent loss on 1K shares. So between all those three attempts, I probably lost about 400 bucks 400 bucks or so off the top or 300 bucks off 300 about 300 bucks off the top bringing me from um i was up about like 680 to green only 300 bucks or so around 300 dollars and then we held the low surprisingly we held the low and we started getting increasing volume again for the break of four and I got in for the break of four, adding, adding into the highs for the break of high a day and selling into 430s and 440. Um, and I was able to make all those losses back in that one trade, which is good. But I did over trade this area and I gave back just too much. I gave back too much. I wasn't patient enough. I was being too active and I was losing a lot with just on the spread of like one cent loss, two cent loss. Now, if I'm trading 2K shares, which is what I was trading with, 2K, 1,500 to 2K shares, you know, that's a $40 hit, $40 hit, you know, do that a couple times, you know, five times, that's 200 bucks. And I just gave back a little bit too much profit here in this consolidation. I should have just been more patient um, with not giving back profits, you know, and if, I did, and if I didn't give back so many profits, maybe, you know, it could be a 1K day, but um, I'll take what, what I got. I'm not going to complain too much. But I just got to remember, you know, to stay patient, uh, especially in the consolidation range area, because, you know, if you get if you overtrade in the consolidation or range and you're um, starting your position, you're entering too high in the range, you're going to get chopped out a lot. So it's better to focus on the dips on key dips, not every single dip, uh, but in key levels here, uh, for example, here, nice here and nice here and not trying to, you know, buy here or here. It, well, on the one hand, like, um, I wouldn't want to avoid this trade because a lot of times, you know, I still would hold a high and continue higher. So, you know, it's good that at least I attempted. 
but you know, keeping that wrist tight as much as possible um, because I don't want to let the move to go go without me. I don't want to let the move to, to go without me, but I also want to keep my wrist as tight as possible in case this does happen. Um, I tried cutting as fast as possible and that still caused a 12 cent loss. So, you know, I don't think I could have gotten out much faster than that. So it kind of is what it is. Um, and then tried uh, trading here again, here off the lows here for continuation move up through 440, but we did uh, fail and continue backside. But overall, I was pretty, pretty satisfied with the action that we got here on NVFY. It was very tradable. We did hold highs, which is great. It wasn't too choppy. It still gave some solid entries and decent momentum. And overall, I'm pretty happy with my performance on it, even though I did have some areas where I did overtrade and get back a little bit too much profits. But overall, pretty decent. Um, we can go through. I can I can show showcase one trade for you guys. But also on NVFY, this one. Okay, yeah, I think I started trading it in here. Um. I think I traded this. I traded this small, small size. I didn't want to give back profits again. What the heck happened here? What the heck's going on here? I guess it doesn't want to show my trades. Yeah, it doesn't want to show my trades. But I did. I did trade in this area for the breakout. Um, wasn't as active here on the front side. I tried buying the dip, but I fumbled the dip. And then I think I, I left this whole move out. I didn't trade this move. Uh, but finishing only up 80 bucks on that one, small size, only a couple hundred shares traded, like 300 to 500 shares, uh, entries and exits. Mostly because I didn't want to get back profits. You know, we were getting later in the morning and I, I thought that the best opportunity would have come and passed already, which kind of did. Um, you know, back to give opportunity, but um, you know, overall, I did I did feel like NVFY was more my type of momentum, my type of style, especially right at 9:30, and the volume was 1.7 up to 2 million shares per one minute candle. Uh, one to two million shares per one minute candle, and back was you know 500 to 700 thousand. So volume was a little bit different, a little bit a lot a lot less. I think at this point the high of the high vol, high of day volume was a one million. Still great volume, but definitely you could tell it was moving a little bit differently, a little bit you know lighter in volume. But we can take a look here at the uh, recording. I can guys I can show you guys the I'll show you guys the the loss on the on this area here, and then the uh, red to green. Or the the bull trap and then the bear trap, pretty much. <clears throat> so here I'm going for break of four, and at 99 out at 01, back in at 04, out at 05. Okay, looks like we're pulling back a little bit. Still hesitant to get in here. Being patient. All right, I should be getting in here for the break of 410. One, now I moved up to 1K shares. Here's where I take my losses. Just too high, man, too high. What am I doing here? 416.5 out at 415.8, in at 411, out at 407. So $50 loss there. Oh, at, and then in at 403 and then out at 391 and that was like a one second trade in one second you know I lose 130 bucks 120 130 bucks then I try buying a dip here and I think it falls through yep no good yet try buying again here <laughs> so a little, maybe a little bit of over trading but you know I'm keeping the losses trying to keep the losses tight as much as possible down low again and then we bounce right back up once we bounce right back up I'm like all right maybe this is maybe we're still in play here and then once I see this break of four 
if it's if it's break break of four, this is bullish. Shorts are going to be covering here. Shorts are going to be covering. They're all their positions are right in here. If we rejected it once, rejected it twice, rejected it a third time, curling back up, and it's showing, you know, we close, we're closing in key areas. You know, shorts are going to be panicking out. Shorts are going to be panicking out. A lot of the times you get that, you know, that consolidation move, the first test, sometimes if not a strong market, the first test of high day, shorts use that to add and, you know, keep their stop at the high. But then if it comes up again, they're like, okay, this is strong. I need to get out. I need to, I need to cover my position. And so I added 500 shares and just adding into the high there. Very kind of aggressive. This is dangerous. <laughs> Definitely dangerous. Um, you know, just getting really aggressive at the high. But I was very confident that we would get a decent squeeze through the high. Uh, and I was adding up to four, my latest sells at 420. So right in this area. So I added, started at maybe 410, 412, and then adding at 419. Or yeah, adding the rest of my position at 419, total 2K shares at four, at average of 417, 418, and then selling at 435. So very decent trade there. That was a nice $300 winner or so. Uh, you know, very, very happy with that trade. Maybe I could have gotten in a little bit early with some bigger size at, you know, break of 410, because we did have that entry at break of 410. Uh, maybe, you know, adding a little bit more shares to that first position, just so that I'm not oversized um, towards the higher, for the higher entry. But <clears throat> that's maybe one thing I would tweak, but overall pretty decent trade. Um, and that was, that was um, my, my biggest trade of the day, so. Which isn't the bit, which isn't the biggest trade ever I've had, but you know I'll definitely take it. Nice solid three hundred and sixty nine dollar win on that. Uh, so seven forty five after commissions, before commission seven sixty four. Accuracy, you know, very decent, fifty five percent. This is the key metric. This is the key metric of how I'm able to stay consistent and keep my losses tight. And this, of course, comes with comes with experience, knowing which trades to hold on to and which trades to cut immediately. So my average win duration is five seconds. My average loss duration is only one second. So for my losers, I'm cutting it in one second. One second. I'm only giving it one second for my losers, and that's it. I'm not giving it 20 seconds for my losers, and then my winners are five seconds long. Your winners always need to be a longer in duration than your losers because that means you're cutting your losses faster and you're letting your winners run. I'm a hyper scalper, so you know my numbers are going to be a lot smaller than a lot of you guys. Uh, but the key thing to take away here is that I'm holding on to my winners five times longer than my losers. And that's how I'm able to have a larger average win to average loss ratio. And as well as the accuracy, you know, if you're cutting your losers faster, it is going to impact your accuracy in a way because um, naturally some of those losers could have came, come, uh, you know, could have curled up or, you know, bounced back into a winning position. Um, so, you know, those losers, you know, they'll count as losers instead of winners now that you're cutting it uh, faster. But for the most part, uh, it's still net positive because a lot of those losers that you're now cutting, you know, you're not taking a bigger loss on it. You're not taking a fat loss like you were. But, you know, my my accuracy, you know, sits around 50%, more or less, usually around 50 to 55%. Uh, when I first started, I was 60, 70% accuracy and my risk reward was one to one. But, you know, now that I've got a little bit more experience, I kind of know, um, I kind of adapted in a way where, I can I know which I know which trades to kind of cut faster and which trades I can hold on to a little bit longer. And like I said, naturally some of those losers, you know, I'm cutting that could have come into a winner, but um <clears throat> if I run if I ran the numbers, more of those losers, the amount of losers that would turn into a winner would be a lot less than the amount of losers that would come into a bigging bigger losing position. Um so I am still net positive. Um, on that but yeah very decent profit margin around 44 percent you know that's okay pretty good can't complain about that not too low um, 
my my real big green days are like 60 percent 70 percent profit margin but um i did take a lot of those losses in the consolidation but uh that was it for the day um you know average position cost you know, i did take some decent position sizes seven thousand between like seven thousand and eight thousand seven thousand to eleven thousand dollar position size on nvfy which was good so my biggest position was 3k shares um at the open i took 2k shares here right through the highs got a nice trade to start off the bat like 200 dollars, 250 dollar trade so i was trading average around two 1500 to 2000 shares in nvfy at the biggest trade was 3000 shares um so you know pretty decent share size um in a hotter market i'd push it even farther but um um, we don't seem to be yet turning into the hot market, but we did have MLGO pop up later in the evening and after hours. This is definitely a good sign. Seeing these gappers, um, you know, after hours, usually when the market gets hot, you'll see after hours start to pop off a little bit. So, you know, maybe this is a sign that next week could be pretty decent. So hopefully, yeah, hopefully we'll see something next week. Um, maybe not MLGO, maybe some sympathy, or yeah, maybe MLGO will, will continue higher. Um, if you guys wanted to check out the full live trading archive, you guys can check out the link down in the description for MMU. You guys can use code TRIAD for 40% off of any membership at, at, at MMU. And as well, if you wanted to see the full archive for me, um, uh, Merciless Markets Gold, Gold includes everything. So... Tim's trading archives and my archives, but if you just want my archives, uh, you can just go to the link down in the description and sign up for my archives and use code TRIAD for 40% off. And you guys can see um, every single day that I trade, I post my full recording, my full live archive, so you guys can review, which you might get some value from. So. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you guys are still watching, hit that thumbs up button for me. If you guys are new, consider subscribing, and I will catch you guys on Monday. All right, peace. Have a great weekend. Relax. Get some studying in. Get some workouts in, and be fresh for Monday. All right, peace.